Buck Buchanan Award winner Terrell Allen has entered the transfer portal, but there's still a little bit of hope that he may return to Tennessee State. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor and current contributing writer at USA Today's Saints Wire. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. Just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Game off. We've got to talk more about Monopoly Go. The fast-paced game lets you team up with your friends for tournaments to unlock awesome prizes like unique stickers for trading, cool partying pieces, and even hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. So download Monopoly Go now for free on Google Play or the App Store. We'll wrap up today's episode with a look at some of the reactions from Coach Reed's peers on her decision to move on to Charlotte. Prior to that, we'll look at Jordan Tolles, who was shining at Baltimore Ravens camp. But first, we kick it off with some sad news. You see, I got tears running down my down my face, y'all. Uh, for those on the audio side, I was rubbing my eyes during the, the, the break, and I actually do have liquid, well, you know, water dripping down my eyes so i'm not crying but <laughs> it was a nice way that's why i didn't worry about wiping it off i thought oh, that'd be funny this would be funny i just say oh i'm crying but uh now you're gonna rewind and see if i was really crying i wasn't my eyes just freaking dry but terrell allen has entered the transfer portal and the tennessee state defense has honestly lost another big player for the second time in the month of april i know we're here in the beginning of may now but we had a lot of things to cover in this one. I don't know how immediate the Terrell Allen transfer portal news was because to my knowledge, he still has not left the transfer portal. I'm sitting here Sunday um, evening, right? It's about six o'clock central time. Or as my guy at HBCU nightly would say central standard time time. <laughs> but yeah, first was Monroe beard, the linebacker who came over from UAPB. And we covered that because this is a leader of the Tennessee State defense. He was their linebacker, came from UAPB, went to Tennessee State for a year, and I think that he's now going to go on to the FBS level, honestly. I think that's what he'll do. Um, but then also in addition to that, in addition to that, you also have to look at Terrell Allen as not even an even departure, but probably a more impactful departure for a couple of reasons. One, he was the Buck Buchanan Award winner last year which means he was the best FCS defensive player in the nation, not in the Big South, Big South OBC, not in the SWAG, not in the MEAG, not in the HBC football. He was the best defensive player in all of FCS football. So that's who you're losing if he enters the transfer portal or since he's entered the transfer portal. And I think that this one really stings. And it's the combination of the, the two that makes this so bad. But losing Allen by himself is incredibly monumental and this is no disrespect to beard i just think that allen plays a premier position which makes the sting hurt a little bit more if you struggle to replace a a linebacker i don't think it's as impactful as struggling to replace a defensive end because the reason i'm breathing heavy is because i know what's in my brain is extremely dismissive and really doesn't fully explain the, the the linebacker position, 
so I'm trying to figure out a way to explain why it's more impactful. I'll just say that the pass rush with the way that the the NFL, the way that football is played these days, that pass rush is more effective. The fact that at defensive end, you're so impactful to stopping the run and rushing the passer. It's just a lot to deal with. So I'll just focus on the Allen aspect of it, right? Because you just don't want to lose a defensive end. We, we've seen it. Look at the guys who get paid the most on the defensive side of the ball in the NFL. You know, look at the guys who get traded for the most. Look at the guys who are valued. It's defensive end. So the, those are the positions that are looked at differently. Defensive end, cornerback, wide receiver. Uh, did I say quarterback? Quarterback and cornerback, right? So it's basically stopping the run or being able to pass or stopping the pass or being able to pass. That's what we look at a lot of times. Um, I'll say this. I thought they were safe because Allen didn't enter the portal in December. And with a guy with his accomplishment, if you really wanted to be gone, he could have left in December. If he just had his mind made up, his grad transfer, maybe he wanted to graduate, right? Maybe he wanted to go ahead and graduate. That's another option. But I'm looking at it from a from an athletic standpoint. When you look at Terrell Allen, his decision to leave Tennessee State at the end of April, the very last day of the transfer portal period, one could argue that that was about academics. I don't know him well enough to say that he wanted to make sure he graduated. I do know that he's leaving as a grad transfer. I'll focus on the athletic side of this because I think it also screams a little bit of hesitance on whether or not he wants to go. Somebody with his ability or with his accomplishments, let's specifically focus on that because this isn't supposed to be an argument about what kind of player he is. A person who just won the defensive player of the year on the FCS level would have a market without a question. I have absolutely no doubts about it. I don't need to have any inside information to feel that way. Then you look at the timing of it. He didn't leave immediately. He didn't say, oh, yeah, I'm just gone. I didn't built up my cash. I'm out of here. What he did is he waited until April 30th, the very last day that you could enter the transfer portal. And that tells me this was heavy on his mind. This tells me that it wasn't an easy decision. And. I'm extremely pessimistic about players entering the transfer portal and coming back. I don't have a problem with they do, with them doing it. I just don't really feel like it's going to happen. It just feels like once you enter the portal, there's a reason you're in the portal. But when you wait until the very last minute, it makes me believe the whole he wants to see all of, all of his options, right? Like Amaya Simmons, I believe she wanted to see all of her options because she just lost a coach. And of course, you're going to enter the portal because you don't know what's going to happen. You want to make sure that your name is there. But these players, whether that's men's sports or women's sports, these players who enter the portal with no coaching change, enter the portal immediately, you want to go. That's just the truth. You are ready to go. Wherever you're going to go, you are ready to go. Isaiah Land won Defensive Player of the Year. Same award, but Buchanan, just like Terrell Allen did. And when you look at his path, it was entering at the last moment. Then he ended up coming back to FAMU. I have a little bit more optimism. I can't sit here and say I'm confident that Allen is going to return to Tennessee State, but I could tell that it weighs on his mind. And Tennessee State is going to want him back. This is a player who is your leader in tackles for a loss. He set a, a tackles for a loss record in a single game this year in Tennessee State history, leader in sacks. Like This was a monumental part of your defense, and I would not want to lose Beard and Allen. I just would not want to do it. It's not good for my team. It's not good for my defense, and that's going to take a lot of reloading very late in the process. Count me out if I can. So we'll see what happens. I'm a little bit more optimistic. I'm trying to optimistic. I'm going to try to dig, get a little bit more information, try to see what I can bring to the show as far as the process behind Terrell Allen once he does leave, because I don't think I'm just going to give updates like that. But yeah, so let's let's keep rolling, because this is a player who transferred into an HBCU. Jordan Tolles. He came over from LSU. Then he went to Morgan State. He stayed within the Baltimore area. And now he is with the Baltimore Ravens. And we'll explore how good he's been in his first couple of days at camp as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is perfect for all of my small business owners. You're always trying to revolve doors and see who's coming when. That's the life, right? Because if you have a small business, sometimes people leave. And when they do leave, let's go ahead and go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn has over 800 million people who are on there on a daily basis, no matter what the field is. We're talking about agriculture. We're talking about media. We're talking about uh, uh, marketing, all of these things. I've seen these people on LinkedIn with my own two eyes. So you're looking at LinkedIn as a place where you can fill any void. 86 percent 
And honestly, by the time I finish, it's probably risen up to 89, 93 or something like that. But 86% of small business owners who post their job on LinkedIn find a qualified candidate within the first 24 hours. So it's on you to go ahead and rise that number if you haven't already. So go ahead and go to LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Post your job for free. All reward, no risk. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, check out the first of its kind live sports network on YouTube 24-7. That's Locked on Sports Today. Check it out now. Check it out later. See what's going on in various portions of the day. Now, as we continue rolling, man, Jordan Tolles is already getting some pretty good reviews in Baltimore Ravens camp from Coach Harbaugh. That's his head coach. So you know that this is a big deal. I feel a little bit bad that I didn't speak about Jordan Tolles in the draft process. Our draft process was one that we've spoken about it and how I viewed it. Um, but Jordan Tolles is a player who I feel like I should have discussed some more. I feel like I should have heard his name a, a little bit more. He's been a quality player for Morgan State since coming to the Bears two years ago. Now he's staying in Baltimore. He's going to the Baltimore Ravens. He signed a UDFA contract. And it's only been a couple of days that he's been in practice. But we have a quote that Karita Parks, Bowie TV reporter, received from John Harbaugh. She was there at the press conference, asked him about Tolles. And this is what Harbaugh had to say about Tolles. He looked really good moving around. He's a big, strong guy, and he moves well as a defensive back. He looked really good the last two days. I just think he's a distinctive player who's got a high level of ability. So we like those guys, especially, for, uh, especially from around here. There's five really good programs in this area that we have a lot of respect for. Obviously, a no, uh, a nod to almost said an ode, but then a nod. So this together, a node. This is a node to <laughs> Bowie State. This is a node, a node to Morgan State. This is just just respect to the to the colleges that are in the area. University of Maryland's probably on that list, even though they're like an hour away. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of a nod to those to those athletes that are here at these schools, and we know that they have a relationship. So yeah, Tolls is a player. And we know they have a relationship because actually Bowie State and Morgan State went to the training camp last year in 2023 of the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know how many players were brought. I don't know how many coaches were brought. But you did have players and coaches from both schools, if I'm not mistaken, that were able to go there and kind of shadow. And you, when you have that happen, it can establish a relationship. And it's one of those things where we're speaking about picking players, but let's not talk about picking them in a draft. Let's leave that last week, right? Like, I, I, I'm kind of over the whole, oh, well, this many people got driven. Whatever, man. I, it happened. It's been about two weeks almost at this point, right? So let's just leave it alone. But if we're talking about accumulating talent on the roster, which is the most important thing, it doesn't matter where you get drafted as long as you make the roster. That whole conversation about how many draftees is cool for about a week, right? And then after that, it's tired. Now it's just, okay, you're here. You got a UDFA contract. What can you do? I'm not going to sit here and cry down to my freaking knees about not getting drafted when these players are still on the roster as a UDFA and can make the 53. So Jordan Tolles right now, it sounds like he's doing a pretty good job. But one of the things I think help as far as saying, yeah, we'll, we'll take, him as a, take on him as a UDFA is that meeting that they had with the schools with the team, it establishes is it establishes a pretty solid relationship, the beginning of a pretty solid relationship. And I look at it through my point of view. So when you look at the Saints, they have what seems to be a pretty good relationship with Ohio State. They pick a lot of their players. I'm sure that they're down there. Ohio State players know that, hey, if I go there, I'd be comfortable. It's just a lot of things. Meanwhile, with LSU, a more local team, it's not so much of the case. If I'm Morgan State, I want to try to establish a better local relationship than LSU and New Orleans have because, or LSU and the Saints. LSU and New Orleans have a pretty good relationship when it comes to talent, but LSU and the Saints. Um, I would want to establish that because our guys don't have, it's not like LSU not having a great relationship with the Saints, whatever, bro. Like I just seen three, was it three LSU players go in the first round? I seen a ton of LSU players go to Jacksonville, man. Like I think they picked, I think they picked three LSU players on their themselves through the first like four days or something or four uh, rounds or something like that. Like it, it's, it's, they're fine. But Morgan State establishing a relationship with, with uh, the Ravens. I think that would be way more beneficial to, the players going forward and being able to accumulate talent. 
and having guys send down scouts because, hey, I like these coaches, so I know they're going to coach these players well. I can send my scouts down to see what Morgan State is doing. I can send them down to see what a guy like uh, what a guy like in um, just said it, uh, Bowie State is doing like like all of these things. I wasn't trying to find a specific player. I was just trying to find the school. But uh, yeah, I think that that's real. You can have it. And with Jordan Tolls, he mentioned him being instinctive. He also said distinctive, but uh, I think he said instinctive as well. That wasn't the right quote, right? You're looking at a guy who had three interceptions last year, which is a sign of those instincts. The year before, his first year at Morgan State. He had one interception, which he returned for a touchdown. He also had two fumbles recovery, two fumble recoveries and two forced fumbles that year. He just has a nose for the football. And he comes over from LSU, which you already know. Ironically, I just mentioned LSU, but you, you already know that he's going to have a high ceiling coming out of high school if you go to a place like LSU as a defensive back. And he was one of the better players coming out of the state of Maryland. He's a Baltimore guy. He returned home for school, and he's staying home for the pros. I think that he just has a pretty good skill set, man. I like I like um, Jordan Tolls. I do. I think he's a quality player, and he's a guy who we should – I should have. Forget what we – I should have spoken about a little bit more, but I'm glad to see him performing well in practice early in his rookie camp campaign. So. As we push forward, I have a couple of reactions. We're going to get through these pretty quickly, and then we're going to look at tomorrow's episode after that. But a couple of reactions on Coach Reed's decision to move from Jackson State to Charlotte, and they come from two of her greatest um, proponents and then also two of her greatest peers. And we'll explore it as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Now, do you want some cool emojis? Do you want some cool stickers? Because at the end of the day, yes, I love competing. And I tell you about my competitive edge and how it scratches that itch all the freaking time. I tell you that on a regular basis. And it's true. But at the same time, it's a freaking game. Who doesn't want to have fun with their game? It's just that simple. So if you love having fun, if you love playing games, Monopoly Go is there for you. If you want to compete and have fun beating your friends at the same time, Monopoly Go is there for you. It's the mobile twist on the classic Monopoly, right? I'm terrible at it. I'm terrible at it. I'm just going to be honest with you. But I do enjoy playing Monopoly Go. That's what it is. Sometimes it's just about having fun. And when I'm losing, I'm going to go take something out of your vault. Get my friends together. We're going to pull off a, a money heist. Word to the professor. So it, it's about you just going out there and enjoying yourself. Have something new to do. You're always on your phone anyway, scrolling through Twitter, watching Locked On HBCU. How about you watch Locked On HBCU as you play Monopoly Go and tell them go ahead and put some money on Park Place? How about that? How about that? How about that? So go ahead and download the Monopoly Go app on the Google Play Store or App Store. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day, making it all the way to segment three. And I thank you two times for that. Thank you. Thank you. The reactions to Coach Reed's departure reinforces the respect that she has received her entire time at Jackson State. And in my opinion, I believe that Tamika Reed is a great example of they'll find you at HBCUs. It's not the way that we really use it. Because a lot of times we mean professional teams will find you. And I understand that she went to Charlotte. She didn't go to North Carolina, right? But at the same time, when you look at how she's been spoken about, when you look at how she's being spoken about now, it reinforces the respect that she's always received. And this is not something that I've seen all of our guys and girls have, like even those who have moved on. When we speak about they'll find you at an HBCU, it's about no matter where you are, talent rate rises to the top right they say good dope sell itself like that's what this is you ain't got to go around with crazy marketing because everybody knows you got that fire like that's what we're speaking about in these situations and i think that tamika reed is a great example of that do i wish that she was still at jackson state of course but am i going to use her departure as an example of what many people would hope happens more with our players yes because willie simmons Received some praise here and there. I thought it was pretty sporadic, to be honest. It wasn't as much as I thought it should have been. And then when he left, I started hearing a little bit more about, yeah, Willie Simmons is such a good coach. And, and sometimes, here's the thing. Sometimes when guys or girls or whatever, right, sometimes when people leave HBCUs and then I hear all the praise for them, I'm saying, okay, so you recognized or you were at least aware 
of the talent when they were at an HBCU. But once they left is when you felt like they deserved to get the recognition. It's like, oh, this is befitting of you. With it, when it came to Tamika Reed, yes, you had things like, oh, she'll have a bigger job. But at the same time, she got the praise while she was at Jackson State. And that's my favorite part. Tamika Reed is one of those people who it didn't matter where her location was. What she did rose to the top. It's the reason you have guys like Gino, people like Kim Mulkey, people like Don Staley, who are praising Tamika Reed while she's at Jackson State. And you see Staley and Gino as people who have praised her since leaving Jackson State. So Coach Reed says Charlotte got a great hire in Tamika Reed. She's going to be a great advocate for her student athletes. She's a great basketball mind and a uniter of the community. Being this close to Charlotte, I will be paying close attention to her success. Then Gino said, I'm so excited that Tamika Reed has been named the head coach at Charlotte. After coaching against her team, I came away super impressed with how hard they work and how disciplined they are. Congrats to Coach Reed and to Charlotte for reaching out of the box and getting a terrific coach. Man, this stuff feel like recommendations for somebody who's already has the job. When you hear what Gino and Don say about Coach Reed, this sounds like a recommendation, right? I'm so excited. Or here we go. After coaching against her, I came away super impressed with how hard they work and how disciplined they are, right? She's a great basketball mind and uniter of the community. These aren't things that have only been said once she left Jackson State. These are things that were said about her from the beginning. And that's the reason that I, I really do appreciate. I've seen some fools say, oh, well, you, this wasn't the energy when Dion left. Shut up. Right? Like, shut up, man. You sound stupid. You sound stupid. Whoever that was that said that, if you know who said that, you can tell them I said they sound dumb for that one. Right? Because you're trying to put two, you're trying to push an agenda. Stop doing that. This is not the same thing. Tamika Reed. Tamika Reed has done so much for Jackson State and embodied so much. There we go. Now I don't want to say done. She has embodied so much for Jackson State that even trying to Push her in a part of your story is disrespectful to her. I'm so proud of her and I appreciate Tamika Reed because she is one of those people who has always stayed true, who always kept it real. And I feel like she did so much. And I'm glad that she got her love while she was at Jackson State because I know she didn't leave in need of the love. I'll leave it at that. So I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. I'll be back on tomorrow's episode. And I'm excited for some things that we're going to break down tomorrow. I have a couple of ideas, so I'm not sure which one I'm going to go with. You just have to stay tuned and see. So in the meantime, in between time, until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care. Stay blessed. Peace.